Hello, welcome to this iMesh video, and this is going to be a quick tip. I didn't actually plan to make this video because I actually plan to make an eCycles video and also a video related to denoising. Um, but I was working on this little project, which is going to be some lights for iMesh, um, and I hit a problem and then I solved it. And I thought that this solution might actually help a lot of other people out. Um, this would actually be fixed if um, Blender just released light linking, which allows you to include or exclude certain lights from certain objects. But that is not available, so we have to work on a node setup. So if I explain the problem which I had, and then I just show you the nodes which I created, and then that should just help somebody. Unfortunately, this took a lot of just experimentation and just plugging each one in, dividing, adding, and I eventually got the result which I was looking for. So unfortunately, I don't really have a good explanation at the end, I might just go a quick brief overview of why it turned out how it did. But if you are in a certain situation where you have a emission, an emission plane, so if I go here, uh, which is going to be something like this, which is inside an object which has glass on the front, you will probably have a lot of noise being cast into the scene, especially if the glass is let me work on this one actually, uh, especially if the glass is uh, frosted or it's grainy glass. So I had to work on trying to stop that from happening. If I show you the result, which was just with the uh, grainy glass without any kind of node setup, then you'll see the problem which I had. So actually, let me just do this. So we have one glass and we have the frosted glass and then we have just an emission shader. And that looks pretty disgusting. Um, the effect which we are left with if we plug that in and plug this in here um, and with a point light you can see I now have the option to have a nice IES as well and this looks like it's still coming out of the light so that is the result which I wanted so um, if, you, if I go back you probably have something like this and I thought how could I turn this off so there are two kind of steps to this. There is the emission disk which is inside and then there is also the glass that it is going through. So I worked on both of those and created these node setups. So this is the node setup for the glass, sorry, this is the node setup for the emission shader and it looks something like this. Again I'm not entirely sure why this is how it is uh, but I'll try to explain in a second. But first this is the node setup which I created for the frosted glass which is this bit of frosted glass in the front and that ended up being like this. And if you just have normal glass uh, on the front, then this is the node setup I had like this. But I think you can also do this. Nope, it has to also do this. Um, plugging the glossy into here does actually create a slight warped effect in the glass, which wouldn't be ideal if it's a glass wall or a glass window. Uh, but for something inside here, it doesn't really matter. You won't really be able to tell the difference. So that is what I had. If you have frosted glass glass or an emission shader inside something like this, then try that out. Maybe it will work for you. But it actually, well, it, it clearly worked for me quite well. So um, I will try to explain why this is how it is. Um, but again, it was a lot of experimentation. So the first thing I did was... Um, work on the glass shader, the normal one. So what I had was just that this is the glass around the edge and that I just tried um, to reduce the noise if you have a normal room scene and you have a window um, and you want to actually let light through, you want to plug the shadow and the diffuse into an add and add that in and plug that straight into here with a transparency. And that basically tells it if it's either of those, it will be transparent and it won't be contributing anything to the scene. Um, I then thought that there is still some noise being cast and potentially it's being cast from any of the glossy rays. So I tried that and that that helped. Um, in the grainy glass, that was a similar situation. I thought that perhaps if I plug this in, into here, then that will also cut a lot of the noise. But then I also tried to do the similar effect to the normal glass by plugging the glossy ray into here uh, and plugging this into here. But I still had noise. Actually, let me show you what I mean with the finished result. Um, Oh no, I didn't actually get noise. The problem I had was that it actually stopped this nice translucent effect. So I was trying to figure out another way to make it so that the translucent effect comes back, but without all of the noise. So I did this and just tried them all. And what I was left with was the, <laughs> the glossy depth created this nice translucent effect, which I was looking for. If I try this one here, uh, there's, there's maybe a little bit, little bit of detail which is missing, but in general that still creates a nice translucent -y kind of lens effect and there is zero noise. 
So that is what I created for both the glass. So then I got onto the actual emission shader and the emission shader was noisy as hell. In the previous video, I spoke about how a ray length could actually help with cutting out a lot of the noise from a lamp, which is inside some glass. And I tried adding um, some ray length and that made things a lot darker, um, which was not ideal, but it is a very, very clean render, which is really nice, but it's just not, it doesn't look illuminated as you'd expect, but there is basically, basically zero noise in there, maybe little specks here and there. Um, so then I thought the things which would be casting a lot of the noise from this emission shader might be some, um, some detail coming off of some diffuse parts or some, some other parts, and that needs to be cut out. I plugged this into here and then I was left with still a lot of noise. Um, and then I thought that perhaps I need to plug something else in like the glossy like I did for the glass previously. So I created another ad shader and plugged this into here and then added that in like this. Um, that also didn't quite create the effect which I wanted and then I unplugged it and I noticed that things got a lot brighter. I thought that that looked quite nice. I think it was actually one, um, but I ended up increasing it to 10 for some reason. I think I wanted this to be brighter uh, so that when you do the compositing, um, and you can add a, a glare effect. Then I thought that maybe to try now to cut out all of the noise was to add in the ray depth, like I mentioned earlier. And that created something like this, which was actually almost there. There's almost no noise coming on and the inside of here is still quite nicely illuminated. And this part, honestly, I was just plugging everything in to try to make this not contribute any light to the scene. Because like I said, uh, this this is a not a very nice light. I want just the IES to cast light because that is much nicer, but just without the noise that's being cast from here. So I thought transmission depth is going through some glass. So maybe if it's going through glass and it's a certain depth, then it can have some effect and it actually worked. It actually turned it off. So. I'm sorry I don't have a better explanation for this. Uh, this is, I guess it's quite complicated, um, but I got <laughs> I got the result which I was looking for. So no complaints from that side. And in the end, I was left with some nice point lights, um, which I can then point into a scene, make these actually contribute some nice light into the scene, but without all of the noise. So it should be very efficient lights for your scene. Uh, these will be released onto iMesh. So if you're interested in something like this, then do keep your eye out, but this should be quite helpful for a lot of scenes because I actually I actually made these because the amount of times I downloaded lights from other websites and the lights were just completely static and you had to edit them. You couldn't move them around. Whereas this, you can point it to a wall and it's done. So um, that is that. Um, so I do actually think that Creative Shrimp released a video about some core sticks and, and working with the uh, light path node quite in depth. So I think if anyone wants some uh, more in detail information about how all of these things work, then do check that out. And yeah, thank you for watching.